Hi there, I'm Sarah from the Queensland Law Society Ethics and Practice Centre and today I'm joined by Ty Haberland, um, uh, who's a legal practitioner in Perth who practices in digital law and specialises in, in emerging technologies. How are you today, Ty? Hey, thanks so much for having me. Very happy to be here and really appreciate the opportunity. Nice. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, the impact of artificial intelligence on the legal profession um, and what young lawyers can do to equip themselves to navigate these uncharted waters. As we know, artificial intelligence is rapidly transforming many industries, um, the legal profession included. And as these technologies continue to advance, it's crucial that junior practitioners understand how to utilise and compete with these tools. Um, so, Ty, in some of your recent articles I've read, Shifting the Ground for Lawyers, and loved it, um, you discuss how AI has the potential to revolutionise the way that we access and understand complex ideas from a wide range of sources. So, in this capacity, it's really important that we understand the scope of its ability. So, what are the capabilities and limitations of AI in the legal profession? Yes, yeah, so I think as a junior lawyer, um, it's pretty important to actually understand what AI is capable of. This doesn't actually mean that you need to go and you know read a course on supervised learning, reinforcement learning, deep neural network algorithms, more so just to be familiar with what artificial intelligence is. These systems, even though we see them now in the form of ChatGPT as a friendly little chatbot, they're going to get increasingly more and more consumer friendly to access, but the actual inner workings of them are going to be essentially democratised quite soon. You're seeing less chat about this whole you know lawyers needing to code argument as a result of these operating systems more be familiar with its capabilities in terms of shaping your work and this might include simple things as it's ease to you know sort out your emails simple to-do lists um, think about the ease of which you can quickly find information and summarize information um, it's to understand the capabilities of how it can augment your work but in the same vein and arguably more important going forward is actually understand the limitations of ai Having a good level of data literacy um, in terms of understanding and developing the ability to critically evaluate the quality and potential biases of the data used to train the AI at the moment will become more and more powerful as we go forward. In particular, that concept of bias, which I'm sure everyone's heard about, um, but also looking and understanding its difficulty in handling unforeseen situations. In litigation, for example, um, it's common that the matters before a judge are going to be somewhat novel, and accordingly, the AI is trying to argue its case from what it understands. Um, and while the AI can perform these impressive tasks, you know, such as recognizing patterns in data, making predictions based on those patterns, and even learning from its own mistakes, it's not capable of understanding the context and intuition in the same way a human can. AI can only operate on the data it's trained on and the algorithm that it uses without any innate understanding or level of consciousness yet at this time. These models are basically only statistically predicting what the next word is, not actually thinking about it. So it's really important to be conscious of that. Absolutely. Um, so as they as these technologies continue to evolve, what skills does a junior lawyer need to be equipped um, with to effectively navigate and compete with these tools? So the word compete is an interesting one. It's, it's, it's important to evaluate the output of an AI for its quality and accuracy to make sure that you're getting a deeper understanding, but also how to use these tools. So for a junior lawyer at the moment, this this term prompt engineering is a loose phrase. I think it diminishes engineers a fair bit and the complexity that they deal with. This is basically a matter of language, um, an art of data in, data out. Lawyers are naturally good at that nuance of words, and this is really the skill. Um, while there's a lot of fluff out there when you say, copy and paste a big amount of text in and ask it to substantially revise with an academic tone, assuming pre-existing knowledge, et cetera, et cetera, you had a lot better results than just saying summarize this. And this is especially true when you're actually feeding in the text itself and not just asking it to recall or think about it. Prompt here and a couple of other websites offer some good examples of that. So getting getting familiar with these tools and how to use them better. Um, another really important skill is to, as I said, ensure the quality and accuracy. AI systems are by no means infallible whatsoever. They can produce a lot of errors, hallucinations due to various reasons, such as poor data quality, inadequate training, inherent biases. These models are, as I said, only statistically going to predict the next words ahead. And as lawyers, our job involves necessarily being extraordinarily accurate in what you're saying. So that means cross-referencing, um, utilising other resources, guidance from experienced practitioners that only the AI could dream of having. Um, it's recognising it really as an aid and not a replacement. There's a lot of fear mongering around, I guess, even from OpenAI themselves, is that the pace this will, at which this will go. Um, it's not there yet. There's a lot of training, learning, general improvements to be made before this starts being a concern of any kind, but to understand that they are meant to augment at this current time and not replace the human expertise and judgment is really important. And I think in saying that is the adaptability. 
So to embrace the kind of mindset of continuous learning and adaptability as AI technologies continue to grow and advance um, and become more prevalent in the legal industry, it, it won't be any day now that we um, will see law firms suddenly use their own internal AIs trained. And I think there's an interesting conversation around where juniors will use those kind of tools and for what and for what purposes, because um, we're not quite at the point yet of being able to just feed it something and go, here's the answer and this is correct because it's trained in our proprietary knowledge yet. So. It's being basically conscious of recognizing um, the the big the biggest skill I would say is just adaptability. Being being very certain that you can move with the times. Yeah, absolutely. And off that, you discussed um, the role of critical thinking, adaptability, of course. Um, so, in your experiences with testing the capabilities of AI, um, have you encountered? You sort of discussed this already. Have you encountered any dangers of? Um, automation reliance and in what capacity can a lawyer evaluate that content um, and balance this with their professional intuition? So yeah, I, th I think the biggest danger of AI tools in the legal profession, particularly for young practitioners, is complacency. There are two kind of phrases around this which you said automation reliance and automation bias. The automation bias is actually not the phrase of you know perpetuating the internal biases that the data has been trained on, which we're seeing a lot of, but rather our human propensity to actually favor decisions made by automated systems over those made by humans, even when the human decision might be more accurate or appropriate. ChatGPT, if you've used it, is such an authoritative voice, but it can be so very wrong. If you're unsure about a particular area of law, you may naturally presume that the nuance that it shows is going to be better than your own analysis because it's AI, it's smarter than you, it's got, this is a big thing and I've, I've dealt with it myself a couple of times in certain areas where you're kind of asking it general questions and then a quick cross-reference to LexisNexis will show that it's actually so wrong, but it's very easy to just kind of presume that it's going to be correct because of it's, it's AI and you're hearing all about it at the moment. And on the other hand, automation reliance is this kind of dependency on automated systems to just carry out the tasks. For junior lawyers, like over-reliance on automation can pose an actual danger where whilst it helps streamline you know, certain processes and improve your efficiency, it cannot replace the kind of nuanced judgment, creativity, empathetic understanding that human lawyers bring to their own practice. Um, it can really hinder the development of those important skills leading to a very superficial understanding of the law, impairing the ability to provide comprehensive and tailored specific advice to a client's matter because you're so used to just kind of asking the robot, hey, what, what's happening here? And it gives you the answer and you just go, well, it's done the hard yards for me. It gives this kind of false sense of security, causing you to overlook maybe errors, biases, which can lead to, you know, legal misjudgments and potentially serious consequences for clients. Um, and whether a lot relied upon unquestionably, those, yeah, as I said, those critical thinking skills necessary for effective legal analysis and decision making are just going to keep on getting watered and watered down if you're so used to just not verifying your results through independent research and testing. Um, those are vital for actually identifying any errors um, because using good judgment with, you know, trusted sources is something that's going to go ahead no matter how advanced AI gets. There's always going to be another side of the story and it's, it's to deliver a good user service. Absolutely. So off that, what are the ethical and confidential considerations to take into account um, when when using these tools? Yeah, so the big one, of course, and, you know, whilst no junior lawyer should probably be amongst the robust nature of uh, firm cybersecurity practices, um, junior lawyers need to ensure that AI tools are basically protected um, in the sense that you are not, especially in this day and age right now as we speak, where these are all it, even your open source ones still kind of have some kind of top shelf um, black box that it's being fed information into. So the biggest one, of course, is client confidentiality, um, not feeding in privileged conversations, not putting in privileged things, because a lot of these terms of use that you're seeing actually do blatantly admit ChatGPT's recently allowed for business users to potentially not train their data on the servers themselves, but for the most part, you can rest assured um, that if you are feeding information into a machine, then it is going to be utilizing, analyzing, and who knows what with that data. So that's the biggest um, ethical one. And I'm sure that the law will respond accordingly quite soon into how we're going to make sure that that's under wraps. Absolutely. Um, so what do you see as the greatest challenges for um, that are facing the legal profession entirely um, in relation to the development and deployment of AI? You've sort of delved into those, but on a broad spectrum. Um, I think I think the biggest challenge is, you know, law by its nature is steeped so deeply in precedent, 
often moves at a very measured pace, pace both to ensure fairness and maintain the integrity of the judicial process. This slow pace is at, at odds with the fast moving disruptive nature of AI at the moment. Um, these slow deliberate processes are just going to be uh, overthwart with this rapid technological change um, in, in terms of both the delivery and the outcomes. Promising this increased efficiency and accessibility is going to provide substantial challenges to kind of manage to manage to like reshape these traditional conventional practices that have just the people at the top particularly have just known since the dawn of time. Uh, I think I think ushering in a period of AI, which is why I kind of combat the whole doom and gloom thing, because there are many firms out there that still run on fax machines. <laughs> No paperless practice. <laughs> um, so what best three, what three best practices would you recommend for a junior lawyer um, who will need to use these tools and how to incorporate them without relying on them? Of course. Yeah. yeah. So three best practices, I think, in my experience so far has been, yeah, a really critical evaluation. Don't accept any AI outputs at face value, but evaluate them, cross check them. AI tools make mistakes, overlook things, and can be influenced by bias. Um, you need to use your own legal training and judgment to assess the relevance, accuracy, accuracy of AI in outputs. As I said, how much this is going to be possible in the future will be interesting when these become more and more the source of truth for us. But for now, it's just really, really important to critically evaluate things. Um, the second is probably complementary use. So AI use should be used as a complement to, not a replacement for traditional legal skills and activities. Continue to engage in activities such as writing, negotiation, build skills, build professional development skills, um, but take the grunt work over to the AI. That's that's where the real value is. Continue to use that creativity, empathy, judgment. And the final one is probably just continued learning. You know, as these evolve, stay updated on the latest developments, understand the limitations, understand the capabilities of these tools, how they work, what data they might be trained on when your firm brings them in and how to best interpret or even just use them um, as powerfully as you can. Because at the end of the day, um, this, uh, this technology will not replace the lawyers, but the lawyers who know how to use this technology will be getting such a step up over the ones who kind of are resistant to it or turn a blind eye to it. Absolutely, it's about knowing how to use it. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today, Ty. Um, how, can we contact, how can we contact um, you and see your resources? Um, so I'm a, I'm a digital lawyer, as you said, at um, Sterling and Rose. We're a boutique firm specialising in, you know, cutting edge law. This ex exactly this kind of stuff where the law has not yet been developed or is developing, and helping guide clients through. So um, you can see us at our website at sterlingandrose.com, and on our LinkedIn page, we're very active on there. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Ty. Thanks great. For Thank you so much. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Appreciate it. Cheers. Bye.